During six days, the fire ritual Kunrig Leji Yana cycle was performed in Trichnor Butse. It is a very special fire puja, both for the complexity of the ritual and for the large numbers of offerings. It is exclusive to the Bun tradition. Basically, uh, this is a, also a form of offering and generosity practice uh, by way of burning different kind of mantras and offerings into a fire. Kuri Leji Junga is the name of the cycle uh, through which uh, we do this uh, uh, performance of this puja. Kuri means all knowing or all aware, uh, all aware and Leji means for actions, the continuity, the fit. The one cycle is Longje is the uh, cycle of the thousand Buddhas. Kurik literally refers to the essence of this practice, which is the uh, uh, all awareness, or which is, we can say Rikpa. So you can do this kind of ritual for both uh, helping for dead people and also for live people, people who is uh, living. So we can do the both. In our tradition, and especially in the eastern part of Tibet, um, whenever somebody dies and passed away, uh, they make their full effort uh, to you know perform this ritual. So it is very quite popular. Buddhas and many early masters strongly suggested doing this kind of uh, ritual. So usually when a very important lamas or masters uh, passed away, we do this uh, their kind of funeral with the uh, performance of this ritual. For them it doesn't matter when we are doing this, uh, it doesn't mean that they need purification or they are kind of a, some full of uh, something that is need to be purified but we use this ritual in order to you know uh, purify and uh, uh, bring liberations in all the beings all the sentient beings you know for the ordinary people then we do this uh, ritual in order to purify their karmic defilements and obscurations and also pacify any kind of obstacles or uh, negative forces that may hinder in their transition of their you know uh, you know pardo or even someone who is has taken rebirth we never know where they may have taken so if anyway we are somewhere in the samsara so then we have all kind of obstacles i know the tibetans they have uh, this uh, ritual about the 49 days they do uh, after somebody died and but then my spiritual son thank you to him uh, he told me that there is also a ritual it's the same kind of ritual you can do for yourself in your lifetime also do it for all you love and living beings general so i was thinking and then i said oh great you love people they go they they die or also material things going and coming so uh, all represent impermanence but my own dad coming closer and i don't know the circumstances of what will be happening you know <laughs> The preparations for the puja started. For three days, 25 monks arranged the space and made the last offerings like the tormas and the sweets. Uh. There are 82 offerings, 24 different objects, and 1,225 mantras. Everything has to be presented nicely, in a special vase, and placed in a harmonious way. 
When everything is completed, a beautiful altar is ready for the ritual. This puja, when you look from uh, outside, it is a big kind of ritual, like a feast, you can see, you know. So firstly, it is not easy, you know, you firstly, you have to know procedure of the ritual very clearly, you know, it is very complicated. We have to learn monks, they train for a long time. And then secondly, we have to accumulate all the necessary substance, uh, materials, you know, um, that is uh, right now, these days, for example, place like Kathmandu, it is not so difficult. In ancient time, like place like in Tibet, particularly in the northern part of Tibet, these kind of rituals are very good, uh, difficult to perform. Firstly, you cannot find these materials easily. You have to prepare them years and months before, even to get the papers in ancient times. This is uh, the, the text, how to make the ritual. The chanting master, Yung Drung Tarching, read the book Kunrig Leji Gyunya, and Kempo Gelik Jimpa translated him. They explain the offerings and the main parts of the ritual. There are 24 different object offerings in this ritual because everything is included from six cycles. The four enlightened activities, the continuation deities, and the 1,000 Buddhas. One part of the offerings is food. Bowls of the best quality butter, many different kinds of sweets, such as the traditional cake with a bun swastika, and also excellent cheese and water. In general, the sweet dishes are made of white and brown sugar, honey, milk, butter, yogurt, sampa, and rice. For smell, many kinds of incense sticks are offered. Cereals and grains are also offered. Barley, wheat, rice, Naples beans and soy, along with several varieties of seeds and five types of medicine. For sight, Flowers and the seeds of the plant are created on bamboo sticks and painted by hand. Precious offerings of gold, silver, copper, iron, and pearls are also included. When these materials cannot be obtained, coral and pure turquoise are used for offerings. The tiger head is the symbol of victory. Victory over all negative actions, disturbances, negative karma, negative emotions which cause or create obstacles and difficulties. The banner is made of five different colors. On the top of the banner is the symbol of the three rainbows. In the past, banners were made from special materials which belong to a king or queen, but now they are usually made from fine silk. Other banners are made for protection, with the drawings of different weapons, such as swords, spears, arrows, or balls. Additional banners are painted with images of animals, mountains and clouds. Popularly, we use, you know, five kinds of offering. We call namga, namga choba. That is like a butter lamp, a water, incense, and then shalze uh, is like a food, and then flower, you know. These offerings are externally looks just offering, you know, like, looks like uh, GT's needs or something. It doesn't mean they need. So these offerings are connected with our five senses, you know, five senses which are connected with our five organs, connected with the five, you know, uh, aggregates, connected with our uh, five negative emotions, you know. So making offering of this, each of these, symbolize the, the liberation or purification of our inner, uh, the negative emotions or purification or transformation of our ordinary five aggregates, or purification of our five senses, or transforming them into the pure senses, like that. You know, that, that is just simple example. The mandra is the main Buddhas, the four Buddhas Buddha. of the acti four activities in enlightenment. So there's so many different divinities, causing of different, and each mantra is like they don't, so all like this way. Uh, that to you know, there's gold, silver. You see, it's right, handwriting, not painting. Of the all the five cycles that I mentioned, you know, earlier. So there are there are main mantras, and then there is a mantra, main purification mantra, 
uh, through the fire, you know, fire deity mantra. The average is you know, writing by gold, silver, and especially the inks, you know, there's the, you know, also the conchos, and the, the, the middleway, and the writing by the, the iron border, and then the copper border, and then the make, and the finally, and the, you don't get anything, and they use the different ink, and the really special pure inks, and the writing that this, and the connect to the, the you know the book and instruction and the chantry master is focused on almost whole year and uh, writing this uh, you know 80 percent uh, you know that way and uh, really precise and uh, high quality and uh, the most the use in the gold and silver is the the thousand buddha's mantra and that's the, the long mantra and the, the mantra writing the you know the wood and uh, 1,225. For three days, the preliminary part was performed. It consists of creating a mandala on the ground for the making of the ritual offering for the deities. At first, it is necessary to request permission from the Lord of the Earth and the Lord of all the five elements to make the mandala on the ground, offering tormas and five precious objects. The next step is to secure the boundary of the land by putting wooden posts at the four directions of the mandala. That keeps away all obstacles and liberates anger and negative emotions. This, is, this too is peaceful and wrathful. This together is called bodhisattva. And then this is this uh, subdua and cycle, and there's uh, 85 different benefits and divinities, and all together. Next is the creation of the mandala, constructed with pure sand of many different colors. After the measurements are taken, a link is made with all the different cycles of the various divinities. The mandala is a building of a palace of the divinities, which symbolizes where the divinities will reside. You can also make like mandala of each, you know, cycle, very, and then it becomes too, too many. So, but the due continuity, the main central one, so contains all the four aspects of the four actions, considered to be very special and very uh, sacred, uh, you know, uh, to do. But then this same mandala, it has its own kind of like special, uh, you know, procedures and special effects by doing this, you know. The, like a sand bears a very impermanent nature. It is heaps of this can create many beautiful things and big things, even can create uh, mountains. But in, the, in, the, in its essence, it's uh, just, uh, you know, like a collection of so many small, you know, uh, dusts. So that can be uh, collapsed and kind of disappear quickly. The ritual continues with the purification with incense, blessing water and offering of the ransom to the eight classes of beings, asking them not to create obstacles during the ritual. Now the main part of the ritual begins with the three contemplations. Keep in the natural state, generate compassion, and the intention of enlightenment. With this foundation, the inner boundary is established. It is necessary to purify all inner obstacles in order to invite the divinities. Then the monks visualize the divinities, a vase with 25 different substances, including medicines, water, and milk, support the visualizations of the divinities. The vase is beautifully decorated with white scarves called katas and peacock feathers. The ritual continues by inviting and requesting the divinities to sit on the altar. 
then offerings, prostrations, confessions, and the reciting of the mantras for each cycle of the divinities begins. One of the main offerings is called Sok, symbolizing the universe with nectar and tea. Nectar symbolizes the liberation of anger, and tea symbolizes liberation from attachment. All the offerings are offered with contemplation, visualization, mudra, mantra, and an offering substance. With this, the main part is completed. It is the fourth day. The monks who perform this ritual begin with the purification of their mouths. For this, a liquid is prepared with a mix of milk, honey, six excellent medicines, and other substances. They receive one drop on their hands and then put it in their mouth to remain clean during the ritual prayers. Next, the ritual starts with the secret boundary offerings to prevent any obstacles which may cause struggle, misfortune, or disturbances during the fire puja. It continues with the practice of bodhicitta, refuge, and confession, and the invitation of all the fire wisdom deities. The mandala is prepared for burning. Now the fire puja begins for each of the six cycles of divinities, each with its different offerings. Before the lighting of the fire on the mandala, the high lamas and monks perform special prayers for the living or deceased people. Now, a highly realized master reads the names of all who requested the puja. He lights the lamps of the three enlightened states, which are beautifully decorated with mantras and prayers, and puts them in the fire. The external fire represents the primordial wisdom integrated with the natural state and compassion. The primordial wisdom liberates all kinds of obstacles, defilements, and negative actions, negative speech, negative thoughts, and diseases. This fire puja ritual is very powerful for purification and has great benefits to liberate all impurities and remove obstacles and karmic traces. It also increases good fortune, merit, and wisdom, accumulates virtues, and reduces negativities. The mind becomes peaceful and joyful, blessed by the power of the wisdom deities.
The fire puja continues with the burning of the offerings, objects, and mantras. The monks open the bound wooden sticks, read each mantra, and bless them with medicine and rice before offering them on the fire. These offerings continue for two days with two groups of monks reciting the mantras. One group recites the mantras for the five deities, the other for the 1,000 Buddhas. As every day, the ritual starts before sunrise. At five o'clock, the fire is ready to continue the burning. Traditionally, fire pujas are performed for different purposes. A peaceful fire puja generally is done when a country is having misfortunes, a lot of fighting, violence, hunger, or famine, or bad crops. When the puja is performed, the country will become prosperous. The increasing action divinities, fire puja, is useful for increasing good fortune, power, property, and happiness. The wrathful fire puja may be performed when someone has recently died, to help them liberate their suffering in the Bardo. It is also performed for the benefit of living persons, to liberate obstacles caused by invisible beings, demons, and other beings who cause obstacles, such as the eight classes of beings, or enemies. The ritual also liberates negative thoughts and diseases. The morning of the sixth day, the monks carry from the temple very large wooden placards containing prayers, mantras, and the names of deceased and living people. High Master reads the mantras, prayers, and names and blesses them. Then the placards are carried to the senior geshes and monks who read them and take them to the local people who receive the blessings. Then they are offered to the fire. Yeah, be included in, in this kind of ritual. Not, not only look at, you must really and that was um, give me a big trust for the moment of my own death because I know I had the feeling you know in that moment they all will come <laughs> and they all will help me right <laughs> so wonderful so I say thank you to everybody <laughs>
The final day completes the offerings with the monks holding the symbols of the divinities which target the effigies of demons and other beings causing obstacles for sentient beings in order to subdue them. The High Lama and monks conclude the ritual by offering prayers of aspiration with the wish for all beings to have peace and happiness. The fire puja is finished. Now the lamas return all parts of the text of the ritual to their original books. It takes time. With this, we can see the complexity of the ritual. After, the, after being burned, negativities and obscurations, it is liberated, it is uh, transformed into the state of divine state of uh, fire deity. You know, like, like that. So, you do always uh, water offerings, or also you can uh, think in the uh, similar. So, always every day you, you should con connect uh, in this way. Yeah, it is not something that you do once in a while and then completely forget. That is not the way. To, for a practitioner to give. The smell of the burning offerings and the aspiration prayers still floats in the air, benefiting all beings. <laughs>